Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Following the final arrest of Joaquin Guzman Larea, aka El Chapo in 2016, and his subsequent extradition to the USA in 2017, where he would eventually be sentenced to life in prison for drug trafficking, many in the media suspected that the Sinaloa cartel would suffer a detrimental impact following the loss of one of its most prominent leaders. In the years since the sentencing of El Chapo, the Sinaloa cartel have continued to be one of, if not the most successful cartel in Mexico, trafficking a myriad of drugs across the border into the USA, including the deadly substance fentanyl, which has largely contributed to the increasing number of overdose deaths in the USA. They still carry much influence across Mexico and abroad, and are showing no signs of slowing down. However, following the final arrest of El Chapo, few could have predicted the rise of Los Chapitos, the sons of El Chapo, who have gone on to garner an incredible amount of influence within the Sinaloa cartel. El Chapo Guzman, following his final arrest, is said to have given his sons, Ovidio Guzman, Joaquin Guzman, Ivan Guzman and Jesus Guzman an out. It said, while still awaiting extradition, he sent his sons, as well as Damaso Lopez Nunes, aka Licenciado, a letter, informing all parties that he wished his sons would leave the drug trade and take money that he set aside for them to live comfortable, normal lives, while expressing a desire to hand over control of his drug routes to Damaso Lopez. Although a violent, hedonistic psychopath, Chapo fought a great deal of his sons, and was said to be keen on not allowing his sons to make the same mistakes as he did, nor did he think that they were capable. Chapo grew up broke as a joke in abject poverty, with a lack of schooling and opportunities in rural Sinaloa, and as far as he was concerned, he had to do what he had to do to make a better life for himself. His sons on the other hand, grew up in affluence, they never had to struggle like their father, and were afforded the best education money could buy. Chapo had already lost one son in 2008 as a result of the Sinaloa cartel's war with the Beltran Labour brothers, and he didn't want a similar fate for his remaining boys. He gave the boys an out, but they refused. In fact, the word is that Los Chapitos felt resentful that their father didn't think that they had it in them to take the reins of the organisation that he was instrumental in building, instead handing control over to Damaso Lopez, who wasn't family. Damaso Lopez Nunes was a high-ranking Sinaloa cartel member who worked closely with El Chapo for a number of years. In fact, he was described by some as being Chapo's right-hand man. He started his career in law enforcement, and by 1999, he became a top official in the branch of the prison administration system that focused on maximum security institutions, including the Puente Grande Penitentiary in Jalisco, where El Chapo was detained. According to Mexican and US police sources, Licenciado established a network of corrupt prison guards and was personally responsible for organising El Chapo's escape from Puente Grande on the 19th of January 2001. Only a few months before Guzman's prison break, Licenciado had resigned from his post at Puente Grande. Following Chapo's escape in 01, Damaso Lopez would then join the Sinaloa cartel full-time and would quickly become one of El Chapo's most trusted men. Given his background in law enforcement, Damaso Lopez was instrumental in ensuring drug loads were safely trafficked to their location. He had a sophisticated structure that ran throughout Latin America as well as the USA, which enabled him to bribe law enforcement officials, making sure that the merchandise flowed without interruption. Following the penultimate arrest of El Chapo in 2014, under the request of Chapo, Damaso took control of Chapo's faction of the Sinaloa cartel, much to the dismay of Los Chapitos. Around this time, tension had already begun to build between Damaso and the sons of El Chapo, with Los Chapitos expressing the desire to take control of their father's affairs. Damaso would officially be in control for the next year, however, he could never rein in the sons of El Chapo 
who by this time were developing their own reputation within the drug trade, not just based on their father's name, but based on their ruthless and reckless nature. El Chapo once again escaped prison in July of 2015, where he would regain control of his organisation, but would then be arrested for the final time in February of 2016, leaving a power vacuum within the Sinaloa cartel that Damaso Lopez was expected to fill. It's worth stressing that many who covered cartel activity at the time felt the same way about Los Chapitos as their father did. Ultimately, they were viewed as rich pretty boys who were more concerned with social media influence and portraying the image of being traffickers rather than actually being willing and able to work in the brutal drug trade. However, as the years passed following the arrest of their father, the sons of El Chapo would prove everyone wrong, developing the reputation of being arguably more ruthless than their father ever was. From 2016 to 2017, tensions between Damaso Lopez and Los Chapitos were at a fever pitch, with the boys disrespecting Damaso and disobeying him at every opportunity, running their own drug shipments and operations. Damaso is said to have tried to work with Chapo's sons and smooth things over. However, things would end up getting so bad that allegedly Damaso was willing to go to war with the sons of his former boss, as well as the other long term Sinaloa kingpin, Ismael Zambada. Damaso allegedly attempted to forge a plan that involved killing Ismael Zambada, as well as terminating at least two of the sons of El Chapo. In fact, it's highly suspected that Damaso Lopez was the orchestrator in the kidnap of Jesus Alfredo Guzman and Ivan Guzman Larea in Puerto Vallarta in Jalisco in 2016. Jesus and Ivan were in town at a fancy restaurant known as La Leche, celebrating Ivan's birthday with a host of other guests. However, as the pair were kicking back and celebrating, 16 masked gunmen stormed the restaurant and kidnapped the two brothers. It's believed that the gunman may have belonged to Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, CJNG. However, the story goes that the kidnaps were not authorised with Cartel boss Nemesio Osaguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho. Instead, it's speculated that Damaso Lopez orchestrated the kidnappings using Mencho's men. El Chapo, while behind bars, caught wind of what happened and saved his son's lives. El Mencho's son, Menchito, who was also in the Mexican prison system at the time, was abducted by inmates loyal to the Sinaloa cartel under orders of El Chapo. Chapo gave Mencho the ultimatum of release my sons unharmed or your son will also die. Mencho would then organise the release of Chapo's sons and punish those who conducted the unauthorised kidnapping. He sent feared hitman and CJNG cell leader Carlos Andres Rivera Varela, aka La Firma, to locate and kill those responsible, which he duly did in ruthless and brutal fashion. Damaso Lopez was then arrested in May of 2017, before then being extradited to the USA in July of the following year, essentially giving Los Chapitos full control over their father's portion of the Sinaloa Federation. The brothers, since having full control, have developed the reputation of being arguably the most violent leaders within the Sinaloa cartel, with hit squads loyal to them being recognised as arguably the most ruthless within the Sinaloan Federation. They have also developed the reputation of being extremely impulsive, which further exasperates their violent tendencies. Most notably, they have become known for being extremely hard to work with. Most notably, this has been highlighted in the tensions between Los Chapitos and long-standing Sinaloan boss Ismael Zambada El Mayo. Zambada has been in the trafficking industry since the 70s, and while extremely ruthless when necessary, tries to keep violence to a minimum in order to stay under the radar. Zambada's old-school narco values and more diplomatic nature are not compatible with the new generation of traffickers such as Los Chapitos, who see hyperviolence and aggression as a mere means to an end. Zambada's violence tends to be more retaliatory, whereas Los Chapitos' violence tends to be more in-your-face and brazen. 
Ismael Zambada has tried to keep things smooth with the boys. However, as the years have passed, it's speculated that he sees them as a liability who bring unnecessary attention upon themselves and the Sinaloa cartel as a whole. The boys also seem to view Zambada as untrustworthy, with them suspecting Ismail of being responsible for the arrest of their father, which isn't unfounded as Zambada's son, Vincente, did testify against El Chapo during his 2018 trial in order for a plea agreement and residency in the United States. There have also been rumours that Los Chapitos accuse Zambada of not doing enough when Ovidio Guzman was captured for the first time in Culiacan in 2019. A video was eventually released after Sinaloa cartel gunmen loyal to Los Chapitos flooded the streets of Culiacan, threatening violence against the state, as well as capturing soldiers threatening to execute them if Ovidio was not released. After the release of Ovidio, tensions between Los Chapitos and Ismael Zambada would only grow from there. Ovidio would later be arrested again on the 5th of January 2023 and was quickly extradited to the USA, leaving Ivan in charge of Los Chapitos. Violence between the two sides of the Sinaloa cartel has gone on for a number of years now, primarily in the border state of Sonora, where gunmen loyal to Los Chapitos have battled against a group of Sicarios loyal to Ismael Zambada known as Los Rusos, which has subsequently turned Sonora into one of the most violent states in Mexico. The violence has also extended to the adjacent border state of Baja California. There has been speculation in recent months that Ismael Zambada has tried to distance himself from the war between Los Rusos and Los Chapitos, with some claims that Zambada is no longer supporting Los Rusos and has let them go independent, which I find hard to believe considering the importance of maintaining influence in border states such as Baja California and Sonora. It seems that the rumours may have come from an Instagram account belonging to someone impersonating high-ranking Los Russo's gunman, El Plaga, or in English, The Plague. The social media post claimed that Los Russo's were no longer working under Mayo Zambada or the Sinaloa cartel, and were totally independent. I have heard some journalists claim this to be true, however, I still feel more concrete proof is needed before this is confirmed. Regardless, the tension between Los Chapitos and El Mayo and the on and off war between Chapiza gunmen and Los Rusos highlights the unpredictable and violent nature of the Sons of El Chapo. In recent weeks, Sicario groups loyal to Los Chapitos have found themselves in a new war in the border state of Sonora against criminal cells who recently declared independence from Los Chapitos, including Los Paredes, Los Cazadores, and most notably, Gente Nueva Salazar, also known as Los Salazar, who are an offshoot of a criminal faction known as La Gente Nueva, who were formed in Sonora State and have been working under the Sinaloan Federation for a number of years. Most notably, Gente Nueva gunmen were on the front line during the Sinaloa cartel's war with the Juarez cartel throughout the first decade of the 2000s. Los Chapitos publicly distanced themselves from Gente Nueva Salazar at least a year ago. However, the violence has only recently transpired between the two groups, and as a result, various graphic videos have emerged from Sonora showcasing the brutality on display. Los Chapitos are already stretched in Sonora, given their existing war with Los Rusos in the state, which recently resulted in the death of high-ranking Los Chapitos Comandante Samuel Ibarra Peralta, aka Commander Pia, and with the new war with Gente Nueva Salazar, Los Chapitos are facing a quagmire in Sonora State. Today, we will explore a couple of said videos that have stemmed from the conflict. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual videos? The first clip is short, at only 38 seconds in length, and is shot at the dead of night in the Sonoran Desert in the middle of absolute nowhere. As you play the clip, you are met with the sight of a captive who is kneeling on the ground with his hands tied behind his back, and quite frankly, he's a bloody mess. 
He has been captured by members of La Chapizas, gunmen belonging to Los Chapitos, and the victim is a pistolero, a hitman belonging to the Salazars. The victim has many injuries to his face and head. He's clearly taken a severe beating as his face is swollen and blood is pouring out of his mouth. There is also a lot of blood on the left side of a man's body, mainly on the shoulder, and on close inspection it looks as if his left ear has been cut off, though it's hard to tell. The captive is then interrogated. Despite the victim being a bloody mess, he remains calm and stoic throughout the interrogation, showing no emotion, only occasionally grunting in pain due to his injuries. The captive states, I belong to the Salazares mob. A Sicario responds, what do you do for a living? Another Sicario butts in, that's right, we finally got your ass. The question is reiterated, what do you do for a living? And the captive replies, I'm a gunman, I'm a hitman. A Sicario then asks, what message would you like to send out to the Salazares mob? The captive replies, well, they're not worth a fuck, and they don't even pay. I wish I would have known that ahead of time that they were going to pull this shit of abandoning me out here. The truth is that they just ain't worth a fuck. A Sicario butts in again, that's right, we got your ass. The interrogator then states, this will be the fate of every gunman from the Salazares mob you fucks. We are the absolute Chapizo mob you sons of bitches. The captive is then point blank shot in the head with a pistol before he drops to the ground and stiffens up. He is then shot multiple more times. The second clip however is much more graphic and much harder to watch due to the fear displayed by the captive. The second video is 42 seconds long and to make matters even worse there are a lot of claims online on Spanish speaking websites that the victim may have been totally innocent of being involved in organised crime and possibly was in the wrong place at the wrong time. While this has certainly not been verified, it's worth noting that in many of the cartel videos we cover on the channel, the backstories are usually shrouded in mystery, leaving a very real possibility that in some of these videos, the victims really are innocent individuals who happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. The Sicarios in the video belong to Gente Nueva Salazar, and once again the clip takes place in the Sonoran Desert, however this time, the video is shot during daylight hours. As you play the clip, you see the captive who is kneeling on the ground with his hands handcuffed. He clasps his hands together, almost in a praying type fashion, as he is surrounded by Sicarios. He pleads for his life while crying. He exclaims, please por favor, please though his pleas fall on deaf ears as the Sicarios continue to threaten and antagonise him. All three Sicarios who are surrounding him then grab him, and this makes the victim wail and scream in terror. The man who is grabbing him from behind then uses his free hand to punch the man in the face several times, presumably in an attempt to stop the man screaming, though it doesn't work. A Sicario, who is also holding a machete, then lets go of his captive before kicking him square in the face, which makes the victim faceplant onto the desert ground. It drops the victim, but his screams only get louder and louder. The men continue to kick and beat him several times before rolling him over to his back. The victim, to stop the beating, then instinctively rolls over to the fetal position in an attempt to protect himself. However, at this point, the Sicario with the machete then takes the blade and swings it hard down onto the side of the victim's head, near where the ear is. It causes a loud, sickening thud. The man continues to scream as he begins to bleed profusely as it drips onto the bright orange desert soil. The man with the machete then strikes the victim again on the side of the head, but this time much harder. You hear the chime of the metal blade ring after it strikes the man's skull, and you also hear a cracking sound. The blow does significant damage, with a huge gash appearing on the side of the man's head that possibly even penetrated the skull. The captive then abruptly stops screaming. The victim is then struck three more times on the side of the head, extremely hard with the machete, and after each strike, you see splashes of blood fly into the air before covering the desert ground. 
there is a lot of blood. The side of a man's head is now displaying four extremely deep gashes that you see more clearly as the cameraman gets closer. At this point, one of the Sicarios can then be seen unlocking the handcuffs on the victim in order to take them back, and the cameraman fixates on the wounds. The gashes are so deep that I think the machete actually cut through and cracked the man's skull. You also hear the victim essentially snoring, and you hear the blood bubble as he does so. The video is extremely graphic, and for a cartel video, is actually shot in decent quality. Though, the most disturbing aspect of a video is the fear displayed by the captive, and the screams are truly nightmare fuel. Also, the fact that some are stating that the victim was an innocent man adds another layer of depravity to this video. It's unclear what the captors accused the victim of, though it's assumed it's linked to the war with Los Chapitos. The third clip is once again taken from the Sonoran Desert, and its duration is just under 30 seconds in length. The video itself isn't the most graphic, but it's unsettling and creepy. The video is shot by Sicarios loyal to Los Chapitos, and they are parading the body of an op who they captured and killed. The video is shot from the back of a pickup truck as it's driving through the desert, and being dragged by the truck is the body of a man. The victim is believed to be a member of Gente Nueva Salazar. A Sicario can be heard talking in the background as the truck speeds through the desert. When the driver hits the brakes on the truck, the red lights cover the dusk-strewn desert, giving a hellish type of aesthetic as the body is being dragged. It's possible that the victim was executed this way by being dragged by the truck, though the cause of death is unknown. It isn't the most graphic of videos, but it is unsettling that this may have been the method of execution, which no doubt would have been drawn out and extremely painful. All of the videos mentioned came out within a week of each other, and the fighting in Sonora has been intense between the two groups. Make no mistake, I'm sure this is the last we've seen from this conflict when it comes to graphic content. We shall see how the situation plays out in the coming weeks and months. Los Chapitos, however, once again prove they are arguably the most brutal cartel leaders within the Sinaloan organization. The boys who at one point were seen as pretenders and influencers have turned into some of the most violent traffickers around. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. If you're new here, if you could smash the subscribe, would be much appreciated. My links are in the pinned comment to my Twitter, to my Twitch, to my Patreon, for those who are interested. And yeah, thank you guys for the support. And as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.